Good afternoon, folks. Welcome back to the second part of this advanced higher section. We're dealing with um, notations for writing electronic configurations. We covered two different notations in the last video. We covered orbital box notation, which is great because it shows you all the details. And we covered this a lot faster version, the spectroscopic notation. Um, in this video, I would like to cover the three rules or principles that you're required to know. Um, I think we'll start with the first one, which is possibly the most interesting one. Uh, it's very often said that atoms are mostly empty space. So, if that's true, why can we not pass through solids? One of the cool reasons behind that is the first principle that I'd like to talk about today, which is Pauli's exclusion principle. So, rules or principles. Principles? Oh dear. What did you get for Harry Lachie? Not sure if it's principles. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> of quantum mechanics. That's what I'd like to talk to you about today. And there are three of them. Let's start with number one. Pauli's exclusion principle. This is not the story of how Mr. Pauli was kicked out of school for being naughty. This is the fact that you must always be able to distinguish between two, any two electrons. In other words, you can never have two electrons with the identical set of quantum numbers. There always has to be a difference somewhere. And that is the reason why we have the MS number, the spin quantum number being plus a half or minus a half. Because if we didn't have the spin quantum number, you could have an orbital box notation. This is 1s and there are two electrons in it, so let's put an electron in here, an electron here. But the problem is, they both have the identical set. They both have n being 1, l being 0, m is 0, and that's the end of the game. ml, sorry. So that's why ms helps you to distinguish between plus a half or minus a half. Now we can tell these two electrons apart. Ta-da! So let's start with the easy one. Uh, principle number two is, <laughs> it's a mouthful, Hunt's rule of maximum multiplicity, or as I call it, seats on a bus. Because we've actually already done this, you just didn't realise it. When we looked at nitrogen, um, we saw that nitrogen has seven electrons. Just wake up my laptop. Nope, it's gone to sleep. That's helpful. Nitrogen has seven electrons, of course, uh, and they are stacked up as one, two, in the 1s orbital. And then we pop another two in the 2s orbital, and then we fired the remaining 3 into the 2p orbitals. Duh, duh, duh. And I joked about the electrons don't pair up, they don't occupy the same orbital until they absolutely have to. And I don't know if you know this, if you realise this or not, sorry, but I drew them uh, that way, all the pointing up initially. And then when we eventually had to double up for oxygen, I put the, the eighth one in downwards. Technically speaking, Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity says electrons will not occupy the same orbital unless they're absolutely forced to, and they will have parallel spins. So that's why they're all spinning upside uh, down. I think I want to throw a word at you today um, because it comes into Hund's rule of maximum, and I've just realised I haven't thrown this word at you, uh, degenerate. This is not me insulting you, Okay. Not calling you a bunch of degenerates. Um, degenerate. Degenerate orbitals are orbitals which are equal in energy. And up until we got to 2p, we didn't have anything like that. But these 2p orbitals I've drawn joined on to each other. That's because they are identical energies. So Hund's rule of maximum multiplicity says that electrons and degenerate orbitals will not uh, pair up until they're absolutely forced to. 
and before they pair up, they also have parallel spins. So that's what I joked, a lot easier to say. Seats on the bus. Don't answer seats on the bus in the exam, you won't get any marks for it. Which takes us to our last rule, which I'm just going to pause the camera because I'm going to cheat and have a pre-printed uh, illustration for this. And we're back uh, with my little cheat. Let me stop the camera from shaking to induce motion sickness in your pupils. Um, we've got this uh, uh, pattern here, which... Stop wobbling. There we go. Uh, this is for our third uh, rule. This is the Aufbau. My apologies to anybody that actually speaks German uh, for that pronunciation. Uh, this is the Aufbau rule. Uh, and basically what it says is you... We actually know this one already. We knew all three of these sort of instinctively. We just didn't know the fancy name for them. Um, this one here was we knew there was up and down, plus and minus arrows. Uh, this one here, I joked about seats on the bus. This one here, I pre-joked about it. And it's basically we fill electrons from the lowest energy up in terms of orbitals. We knew all of that back in the third year, in fact. Two, eight, eight. So we start from the inside and work outwards, from lowest to highest. It's just that the order is a little bit weird. Um, and this diagram here starts off nice and sensible and goes a bit weird. But this will explain <laughs> this will explain something I mentioned in the last video. Um, so we fill we start with one s orbitals, we fill them up. Let's follow the arrows, and then we fill up two s orbitals. Yep, that's exactly what we've been doing. So. And then we move up to two p orbitals. Uh, that was as far as I went. Um, but the next one we fill... That, by the way, please remember that these are energy levels effectively. That's why they've done this. It's quite nice. So this is the third energy level. Um, we had only got to the second energy level. I think the highest I did was oxygen. But if we go and do... Let's fill the electrons in for uh, our... Um, what could we do? We could do... Excuse me a second... Let's do chlorine. Um, chlorine has got 17 electrons. Therefore, we start with, we'll do orbital box and spectroscopic. So this is, N is 1, so that's here. So the N value, I could actually fill the N value in here, actually. 1, lowest energy, 2, 3, 4, and so on. So when N is 1, L, and I'll keep bashing on about this, um, it's complicated stuff, so I'm just trying to repeat it to help you, honestly. Uh, L must be zero. And when L is zero, these are S orbitals. When L is one, P orbitals. And it's two, D orbitals. Um, so these are S orbitals, and there can only be one value of M. M is zero, so that's one pair of electrons. And then Pauli, ML, sorry, Pauli tells us that MS will be plus a half for one of them, and minus a half of the other, and we represent it as this. So that's two electrons out of 17, done. Two down, 15 to go. Let's skip up to the next level, next value of n. When n is two, l can be zero, and l can be one. So now the second level, second energy layer, which we always just did before is just eight, we just lumped them all together, but we now subdivide them so that we have got, um, find the pen, we have got second energy level. So now we've got, so this is the 2s orbital, but we also have two p's because L can now be one. And because L is one, because L is one, ML can be negative one, zero plus one. So there's three equal energy p orbitals and I said to you last time that the name for equal energy orbitals is degenerate so let's put some electrons into here we're by the way we're following Aufbau here because we're starting with 1s and then up to 2s and then we do 2p um, and we're also following Hund's rule because we're putting them all with parallel spins and then we have to actually force them to double up now so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 10 down, 7 to go. If we follow this, we go from 2s to 2p and then 3s. Okay, so let's skip up to the next energy level, which would be our third layer in old money. 
um, 3s first. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 down, 5 to go. One, two, three, control again, four and five. Let's convert that to spectroscopic notation, shall we? Save ourselves a bit of time. One for the first energy level, S for the type of orbital, and two for two electrons in it. Skip up to here, two, S, two. This is still two, but these are P's. So 2p and 2, 4, 6 electrons. And then we skip up to the third energy level. So 3. Oh, I'm not going to fit that in. That's a terrible, terrible teaching here. I do apologise. Let's squeeze in here. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 2 goes up to this point. Now we're into 3, the third energy level. But these are still s's. And then 2. And then lastly... 3p6. Um, just before we leave this, I would like to just clarify why you can have 3s orbitals. Because n, which is this number here, if n is 3, l can be 0, l can be 1, and for the first time ever, l can also be 2 now, because l is 0 up to n minus 1. So that means you can have 3s orbitals, that's this value, you can have 3p orbitals, that's the ones we were just filling up here, and you can have 3d orbitals, that's our new ones here. If you look at Aufbau for a second though, you find there's something slightly odd, because we filled up 1s, and then 2s, and then 2p, of course, makes sense, 2s and 2p are here. Then we filled up 3s, which was fine. Then we fill up 3p, which was here. You might expect us to fill 3d next, but we actually fill 4s first. And just to round off something for a second, that would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 electrons. That's why we didn't want you going beyond element 20 calcium. Because once you get beyond 20, you're now talking about filling 3Ds. And we're going to come back to d orbitals in the next uh, video. Next time round, uh, we're going to look at shapes of orbitals. We're also going to look at uh, the d orbitals. And I'm going to show you something incredibly cool. Why is the periodic table the weird U shape that it is? And what's up with the sticky outy bits? You know, the... the lanthanides and actinides, we're going to cover that because if you've ever been with me before, you'll know that I'm a great fan of proof for ideas. I've just realised that I'm afraid that might be off the screen. I'll have to go back and check. <laughs> uh, and we need proof of all this rubbish because it's all completely abstract, isn't it? How on earth do we know any of it's even true? And the really cool answer is Mendeleev, who first constructed the periodic table, is proving it to be true. But we'll have a look at that next time. Thank you.